Contrary to what people might think, specific B vitamins play a critical role in how we utilize fat, but also how we utilize carbs. And there's two in particular that are very important when it comes down to either maintaining weight or potentially losing fat. So we're gonna dive into them. We're also gonna dive into the best sources of them, whether it's from food or supplements, so we have a solid idea. Now, down below, I put a link for seed, which is what is called a daily symbiotic. Now, what's interesting in the world of B vitamins, some B vitamins are formed via what is called biosynthesis from our gut microbiome, our distal microbiome. So that means part of our gut can actually form B vitamins. So when we're talking about the importance of B vitamins, having a good microbiome is very important as well. So that link down below gets you 30% off of the seed symbiotic, which is a combination of prebiotics and probiotics in a single capsule. Very unique technology. You've probably heard me talk about them on this channel before, but now the discount is 30%, whereas before it was 20, so pretty awesome. So it's really cool. They've got a lot of technology behind the multi-stage delivery of their probiotic and prebiotic and how it fertilizes that probiotic. So really interesting, plus they fund a lot of awesome research on the microbiome. So that link is down below. I don't typically recommend a probiotic unless you're someone that's really trying to make a change. That being said, the only probiotic I typically do recommend is going to be seeds. So that link is down below. The first B vitamin, there's actually two, is going to be pantothenic acid, vitamin B5. Why? Well, the importance of B5 comes into fat metabolism. So what's interesting is vitamin B5 is very important for forming what's called coenzyme A. Coenzyme A is needed to ultimately break down fat. So it's needed for breaking down dietary fat, but also we need this when it comes down to breaking down free fatty acids and ultimately oxidizing fat as well. So if you're deficient in B5, this is very, very prevalent. And we've seen it in the rodent model research. There was a paper that was published in the journal Nutrition. It was in rats, but it was still interesting. They put rats on a B5 deficient diet. So they ate all their nutrients except vitamin B5 they were very deficient in. So they gained weight, but then what they had them do is they had them go for 13 days on a refeed diet with either B5 or without B5. When there was B5 in the equation, the rats actually kept weight pretty good. When B5 was out of the equation, the rats gained even more weight. They accumulated more fat specifically. So this is quite interesting. Now, of course, there's the coenzyme A discussion, but there's a very unique play that could be happening too that we're still trying to investigate. And that's based on a study that was published in the journal Physiology, found that vitamin B5 might play a very critical role in what is called uh, the expression of uncoupling protein one. What that does is that makes it so that the mitochondria specifically becomes inefficient when there's an excess of fuel. And this excess of fuel ends up creating uh, this dissipation of heat. So it means the calories that you're consuming might dissipate as heat. So A, it's helping with fat metabolism, but B, you're dissipating extra calories as heat potentially. More research needs to be done here, but it's very, very promising and quite unique. So clearly very important when it comes down to fat metabolism. Now, the other side of the equation we have to look at here is going to be the carbohydrate metabolism side. Now with vitamin B5, I would say some of the best sources are gonna be like beef, chicken, mushrooms, liver, and avocado. Those are some of the best sources that probably fit within the playbook of what I typically eat. Uh, B5 is definitely something you can get in supplement form. The downside is when you start going higher doses, you will notice your skin dries out. And especially in the summer, this could be bad. Chapped lips, dry skin, just stress on the skin. So you kinda gotta get it from the diet so you get more synthesis and more synergy with other ingredients. Now this other side, vitamin B7, fascinates the heck out of me because vitamin B7 is also known as biotin, which we only categorize as like a hair, skin, and nails type B vitamin for women. However, when you look at the deficiencies and you understand how it works, it's actually probably even more important for high blood sugar and controlling that. High blood sugar plays a role in fat accumulation because if your blood sugar is high all the time and insulin levels are high all the time, that can impede lipolysis. That can prevent fatty acid oxidation uh, or more so lipolysis, fats being mobilized thereby reducing oxidation. So there's a study that was published in the journal Nutritional Biochemistry. For eight weeks, they had subjects take in a vitamin B7. And with this, they found that there was an increase in insulin secretion, but also an increase in the transcription factors associated with the gene expression of insulin secretion. So, and ultimately producing insulin in the first place. What that means is like at the genetic like core level, vitamin B7 was influencing the production of insulin. And what they found is that 
even when glucose levels did not change, glucose tolerance improved. So what does that mean in very human terms? It means if, if I have high blood sugar, my glucose tolerance isn't gonna be good. That means that my ability to use that glucose is not good. That's why my glucose is high, because the cells don't know how to use it. But if I reduce my glucose, my cells will get better at using it because they're not bombarded with it all the time. They became less tolerant, just like you become less tolerant of alcohol the more you consume it, right? So my cells will become more tolerant if I reduce my glucose. What was interesting about this paper is that glucose didn't even reduce, but when B7 was added in, the cells became more glucose tolerant. So they didn't even reduce glucose and the cells were able to use glucose better. They were more tolerant. That is a tremendous, tremendous thing. Now let's look at another paper that was published in Medical Hypothesis, which is a review of multiple type one diabetic articles. They found that increasing vitamin B7 through the diet or through supplementation, independent of insulin, ended up increasing what's called glucokinase. What this ultimately did is it allowed the liver to produce glucose better so that there was a natural feedback where ultimately glucose can be stabilized and insulin function can potentially be there. What that means is that this could be something very powerful for A, type one diabetics, but B, people that are just battling with high blood sugar and having a hard time getting the weight off it might restore and rekindle some of the ability for the cells to use that glucose. Now, what kind of foods would you be eating for vitamin B7? Again, you wanna get them from foods whenever possible. Eggs in this case, we've got mushrooms, which makes another appearance. We've got avocados, which makes another appearance. We've got uh, salmon is another tremendous source and a lot of different leafy greens as well. So we've got mushrooms and avocados are making the cut for both. Uh, liver really makes the cut for both. So you can kind of catch the vibe here of the kinds of foods that we're going for. Whenever you can, go for non-supplemental ways. One thing to note is that B vitamins are something you have to consistently be bringing in. It's not like you can say, oh, I had liver today, I don't need to have it again for two weeks. They're so water soluble, you're going through them all the time. And this is something that the more you work out, the more you sweat, the more you drink water, the more you pee, the more you're gonna burn up and they're actively involved in metabolism. So the more that we are turning things over and fueling and unfueling and working out, we need to make sure we're bringing them in. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.